Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, welcome back to today's episode. I am having to do a little bit of a rethink at the shop. As you know, we brought in a few little things for kids um, to see how they'd go over. So we've got the old toys and I did the old fashioned uh, candy counter. So we had some jars with candies on it. The thing that I was not expecting is the mad insane rush of children that come from the school across the street every day at like 3.30 to the point now where I'm actually getting cleaned out of product. So we are going to expand our candy display. I feel like a good spot for it's gonna be right at the front of the shop here, but that means I have to find room for all this stuff to go somewhere else. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of reshuffling here today and start building up an amazing candy counter because apparently that's what the kids in the neighborhood want and I'm here to deliver what the people want. Okay, this is where I'm at right now. Some of these toys, I think, I think I can move and shuffle things around to accommodate the candy, but I've got to uh, still maintain the toy department. But these little items that are here, like the replica pistol, the antiques and that, those can shuffle down, which will give me this whole shelf to work with. And then I can move and, and switch things around so I can make this little candy display I want to do. But first I got to start moving. Okay, here's where I've gotten so far. I've started emptying out the bottom area here to try and create a couple rows of glass jars, which I have basically all ready to go. This whole area is gonna be kind of like a snack, candy, and toy spot. And this is where the kids come in. I've made sure there's uh, ample square footage for kids to rustle about in here. Um, I've started moving some of my other toys to this area, the gifting items. Um, I think I've got enough space. I'm just gonna start rearranging some of these antique apple crates and lay them sideways and maybe that'll give me enough room to put two layers of jars there. I've been working on this candy wall pretty much all morning and <laughs> I just left it as toys. Really the display was much better on the counter so I put more glass jars there so it'll be what it will be but it's definitely looking nice and full and have more of a variety for the kids. But as I'm standing here the mail delivery lady shows up and she says uh, I've got boxes for you. So we've got a few surprise boxes from viewers like you. And I never expect this stuff to happen. Um, and it's very appreciative when it does, but we're gonna open up some mystery parcels, ba -ba -ba -bum, cause I have no idea what they are, but we're gonna dig through and see what it is. Mystery boxes. The first one comes to us from a Mary Anderson in uh, Indiana. We're going to uh, check this out and see what this is. I'm kind of excited already because I can see in the description, it says Tops hat collapsible. What? <laughs> and Mary was kind enough to actually write me a while ago and said that she had one of these kicking around her house that had been in their family for ages. If that's what this is, I'm going to be so excited. Mary, you might've just made my day. Let's open this up and have a look. And I've got a few folks in here. We've got Greg, who I went uh, adventuring down by the river through the old uh, dump site before. He's yeah. walking around the store today. He bought a fountain pen from me. And then we went and got chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd is with us. Uh, Todd used to work for me at Axel Toys, my old toy store. So some good memories from back in those days. And do you remember any of these toys that are behind me now? Oh, I do. <laughs> like it's not unusual for you to see giant stuffed animals and stuff. We used no. to carry that kind of stuff at the old store. And there's uh, Tree Guy Charlie in the background, friend and relative of Hans, kicking around the shop. So we are here today. Um, maybe Greg, do you want to uh, film this for me? I'll see sure. if I, I can get uh, one of the helpers here to help me out. Let's see. I like. It's like Christmas. You never know. So this is from Mary, and we have. It's exactly what she said it was. Um, this bag probably opens up. I'll get to the other things inside. This is the... Now, I have been wanting one of these pretty much since I was a child, and I've never owned one. Uh, does it work like it, you expect it works? Is there a trick to this? Oh, there we go. Check that out. Now, let's see if it fits. Mary, it actually fits me. <laughs> and look, I'm wearing it. I am officially Willy Wonka now. <laughs> this has happened. We need a cane. I do need a cane. Well, I'm not that old yet, but <laughs> I'll get one. Mother Nature will provide a cane, but I have a top hat that fits. <laughs> and I got the bow tie. So I guess people walk in, I can say, my lady or my gentleman. That's so cool. Oh, that is uh, pretty awesome. And it is the collapsible type. <laughs> and you just pop it out. 
there it goes. Very, very neat. I'm just impressed that it fits because nobody's head in the old days was big enough. They all had small little heads, um, but that actually fits me. And look, she's after my own heart. Look, I'm wearing, I had no idea this box was coming. It seems like I would have planned this considering wearing a, a suit jacket and a bow tie today, but look, there's bow ties. And here's one that's not a clip on, but it's a classic bow tie. But yeah, there's, there's bow ties. I feel like somebody might've been a magician and then they disappeared, but I've got their hat. <laughs> very, very cool. I'll have to dig through some of these other boxes too. And I just so happen to have a selection of fine antique canes here at my store. So top of the morning to you. But wait, there's a letter. Alex, Melissa, and the minis. <laughs> I just, we call Abigail sometimes a mini Mel because her and Melissa sometimes dress and look very similar. But there's a nice little letter in here too. Let's open this up and see what this has to say. Hi guys, just wanted to say thank you again for allowing us to tag along on your journeys. Taking care of my mom gives me zero time to go out. Being able to watch you guys helps me with my stress and feeling alone. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but we're glad that we're able to be part of it. A very small gift for you guys. I found something that you wanted. Love you so much, Mary. Oh, that's so kind. What a nice little letter that you've sent along. And thank you so, so much. Um, that'll have to be part of my personal hang on to an inventory forever because I've always wanted one of those hats. The second one comes to us, uh, it doesn't have a return address on here. It says Moscow. So it looks like they maybe use the back of an old, not sure what that is. Don't think it's from Moscow. Those are all old English stamps that somebody's been hanging on to. Um, well, let's, uh, let's see what this is. And this letter comes to us from Bromley, London from Kat and Steve. And Kat and Steve were very happy to share both my dad jokes, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Dad jokes are not bad jokes. They're just dad jokes. Um, and they've sent me on this, they've written and sent me on this very nice little postcard, but also some little collector stamps from London. Of course, they know that I like old toys. What a, what a cute, nice little thing to send me. Very, very nice, guys. His next bins come to us from Laura in Ontario. And she sent us some little knickknacks that uh, she was hoping we could find a, a good home for, a good use for, and we certainly will. Um, there's all sorts of things in here from, you know, tea tins to books and that. So I'll make sure that they all find the right home. It's very nice of you to send it out my way, and I'm sure went to a lot of effort to mail these things out. They don't look light, these boxes, but very, very kind and cool. I'm going through this box and it's all vintage Playmobil from the 80s. And I remember this set. This was the SO set. You had a mail away for it. Uh, you set up a whole service station. And I thought it was so cool when I was a kid because you could take the tires off of the Jeep anyway, which is in here. And uh, it was just so much fun. But Greg, we spotted a little guy in here. But um, I feel like him and I might share something in common today. And all I had to do today was add the hat. Um, if I would have seen this in the toy box when I was a kid, I would have thought, that guy's pretty crazy. I wonder what he does for a living. Uh, never would have thought antique store owner, but uh, all I, I'm missing right now is that kind of Abe Lincoln chin strap sort of mustache deal going on there. <laughs> Oh boy, when you uh, regret your choices and outfits when you start the day, all you have to do is add a top hat and you instantly turn into a Playmobil caricature of Fancy Man in purple jacket. That's me today. And I think I have just the right spot for this guy. Right in the front pocket. You can hang out there for a while. <laughs> well, I woke up this morning and we had snow all over the place. The roads are really icy. I had the Cadillac into the shop getting brakes yesterday and they're not quite done, which meant that I drove that crazy little British car, the Austin delivery van to work today. And everybody looked at me like I was nuts, probably because I am, but I made it here safe and sound. I'll probably take the ambulance home. <laughs> Zoltar's still back there trying to talk to me. Zoltar is hustling over there in the corner. Um, I had another box show up today. This is something that I bought from uh, a lady down in the US. Um, I'm gonna open it up and show you what it is. Uh, it's an old guitar, but a really cool one. But first I gotta get it unpacked, and it looks like she did a really good job. It's creative using the uh, foam egg cartons in there and wrapping paper and all that. So hopefully it made it safely. If it got cold and the strings were tight, it could have snapped or caused issues with it, but she said she was gonna take the tension off the strings. I hope she remembered to. But we're gonna crack it open, have a look. There, I've got it out. And I can tell one thing, this comes from Hillary in Waycross, Georgia. Hillary. You really like eggs uh, and apparently owls because you sent me this empty box from your snowy owl on limb. 
sculpture that you bought somewhere. Um, so if anybody's wanting to buy a Christmas present for Hillary, get her a whole bunch of eggs because I think she used them all here. Sometimes the problem with buying something that's big like a guitar is the shipping can outweigh the value of the item. This is not a particularly expensive guitar. It's a neat one, but the, the shipping added up in a hurry. Um, but that's okay. It's fun to get new stuff that I don't have in the store and always fun to put something to use that might not have been used elsewhere. So she wasn't using it and we'll find somebody who will. If not, it'll be me. All right, we're gonna dig back through. And yes, it's a, it's a completely other day. And yet Bob is still here. <laughs> He's not left the station just yet. He's come back to visit me this morning. So let's see what this guitar is that I purchased. It was a while ago. Oh, well, it's not, that's not a Fender. I know that much. We gotta get out of the gig bag here. This is a 19, I'd say 50s or early 60s silver tone. It's a hollow body arch top with the uh, dual F holes. Nice kind of country sort of guitar, jazz folk. Nice piece and thankfully, um, Hillary was nice enough not to put a uh, huge amount of tension on the strings. If you if you ship a guitar like this and it's cold weather and the strings are all in tune, it could actually snap the neck as they contract. So this one's in pretty good shape. So I'll have to tune it up and see what it plays like. I'm not kidding about how icy it is. If you look out my window of the store right now, there's been a car accident right where well, you can't really see it, but somebody right there is driven into a tree. I hope they're okay. Um, but yeah, it is first snowfall of the year. There's not much of it, but it's really icy outside. I can't believe I drove the old Austin today. I couldn't figure out exactly what Hillary packed the guitar in. It was uh, eggs and all sorts of stuff. And then I saw this big giant bag, which I thought was for dog food. I'm glad that they aren't feeding the seniors people chow out there where Hillary's from in Georgia, but uh, thanks for packing it up so well. So here's a few of my guitars, a couple Stratocasters, Gretsch New Yorker. There's a nice old Hegstrom there, which I got off a friend of mine. There's a K and uh, the guitar I bought off of Hillary, the Silvertone, just sits ever so nicely in with all these others. Um, the action is sitting pretty high. The action being the distance of the strings to the fretboard is a little bit high, so it's gonna need a bit of a setup, but it is holding a tune. And uh, overall, that finish is in really good shape, so it uh, matches really nice. It's morning at the shop, and we, of course, had a couple familiar faces come through. Mr. Bailey has come in, and you've brought me this lovely picture, which in last episode, you said you were going to do a picture for the store, which, by the way, is a huge shock to my system, because I'm not, I'm really not used to people sending me or giving me things, but this is outstanding. Um, and did you frame it as well? Yes. It's all set to hang on the wall. My goodness. Yeah. Okay. Well, folks, let's um, let's unveil this. And this is, you can verify this is my first time seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Wow, you got the Cadillac in there too. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. You got the bow tie. Oh, I really appreciate you putting this together. Oh, it's my pleasure, Alex. I'll have to find a good spot to uh, to hang this up on the wall. That's really, really cool. Okay. And much appreciated, of course, you've got your signature on there, Robert Bailey. But they can go on Facebook and Facebook, find you. Facebook, I'm posting uh, about a drawing every day or every two days. And is it just Robert Bailey on Facebook? Uh, uh, Robert Bailey, Star Wars artist, would find my one of my two Facebook pages. Oh, wonderful. Well, again, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate you bringing that in. That's fantastic. And how lovely that you got it framed. That's so, so cool. I'm looking forward to getting this up on the wall. That's That's amazing, guys. Hanging around the store, um, Robert just left not that long ago after delivering that beautiful picture and I had a gentleman come through with some collectibles. So an old Winchester Cooey catalog. This is Bobby Hall's Hockey Made Easy. What's cool about this is it has a flip book portion. Uh, where is it? Right around there. See, there he is. There he goes. He's skating all around and he's shooting. I'm assuming he got it in because it's an empty net and he's trying to teach kids, but kind of cool. A neat book. He also had some boxes with some other cool things. This is just a, it's a timing gun for a car for checking your timing. But what I liked about it is it's got that evil Knievel kind of look, the red, white, and blue, the stars. Um, it's still in the package and it shows all the wonderful things you can use this to uh, check your timing and fix up. Look, tune your engine, clean up smog, improve your mileage, save money, save time. That's a lot of saving. But neat thing to have if you've got a, a garage set up and you have an old car in it, this is a neat thing to have sitting on the shelf. This, don't ask me why I bought it, it's really old. It's a McClary Asbestos Furnace and Stove Cement. Now, you certainly wouldn't want to open that, and you, even more, you wouldn't want to drink it. 
Um, but it's a piece of history when people thought that that stuff was completely safe for you and um, certainly not anymore. That said, he also had some old pop cans. This is the Price It Right Contest Pepsi can. Now there are collectors, but these aren't worth a whole lot, like five, 10 bucks, but um, you don't see many old Diet Pepsi bottles. So this was the Pepsi soda bottle from that era, probably mid 1960s, but you don't see much of the Diet Pepsi. They probably wouldn't have sold too many Diet Pepsis back in the day. So it's kind of unusual to find that. Um, got another nice little uh, ceiling mount um, uh, lamp that we could use. I might actually put that up in the store somewhere. And then this picture, which was painted by his, uh, it's an, an Inuit, an, an Arctic scene. And if I flip the back, it says Canadian Native Prince, the artist, Gabriel Gelet, left France in 51. So this is one of his, um, it, it's like a pencil sketch that was done. So early 1900s, born in Paris. So it looks, that number 75 tells me this might have been an auction lot at some point. Either way, it's kind of a neat piece. And um, being in Northern Canada, or being North, North America like we are, these uh, Indigenous uh, and Inuit scenes are very familiar to us and very interesting. So that'll find a room in our art, art room very soon. And the last part of our candy display arrived and the girls are here helping get everything set up. Is there any cool looking ones, Abigail? This is the what about what about the chocolate oh, pizza? The one. I want that. She really wants this chocolate pizza. Look at that. Does that look like something yeah. Abigail would want? Maybe I can pay you in chocolate pizza for helping me out today. Maybe you could. So what's the technique over here, Melissa? Well, first I take a sucker and then I shove it in a hole. Uh, but you're doing the tall ones you said first. Yeah, the tall ones first and then, you know, by size and then shorter, shorter, shorter. Like a big fan of candy. Maybe I should do shorter or tips bigger. I will trust your artistic talents. And I got another box at the store and I opened it up because so I wasn't sure what it was and it's pillows and I thought, oh boy, this isn't for me and it's not, this is for hands. So I'm gonna pack that back up. But one of you out there was nice enough to send hands a nice set of uh, beautiful pillows, brand new pillows. I'm sure he's gonna be really happy to have those for his new place. So thank you very much for that. And there goes the phone. This is my actual phone <laughs> that we're using right now. So it's the end of the day. It's been a really busy day. Packages came in. I've got my pile of packages going out over here uh, to customers. So I feel like I'm finally getting caught up, went through my messages, um, was super frantic there for a while because I had like 15 messages from UPS saying we got a parcel for you. I was worried that they sent it back, but thankfully no. Um, so they're gonna deliver it tomorrow. So just a lot going on. Every single day is busy around here, but I appreciate you guys following along in these little adventures. And today was just kind of a, a day around the shop um stay tuned for more adventures as we go out and find stuff and um do some unboxings and all kinds of crazy things are going to happen so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you all soon and bye for now <laughs>